Mythic! Mythic with a four rare deck. Let's go. Yeah! Smashing. Let's go. Hey, hey, it's Mythic Mike. We are here reviewing the top cards of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. New standard set coming out now. We're going to let you know some deck ideas, the bangers everyone are missing, and we're just going to go through only the good cards. Not going to waste your time at all. I did do a previous one for some of the earlier cards, so we're not going to try to touch those same ones. Check it out if you haven't, but we're going to go through the remaining cards, and this has the best cards I have seen in a while. My God, we're going to beat up Boros Convoke, and this is going to shake the meta up. I'm super excited. Let's go. All right, we have Archangel of Tice, a four-mana angel that counters Boros Convoke. You heard me right. It's a mythic angel, not legendary. A 3-5 flyer, but it has the most awesome ability. As long as Archangel of Tice is untapped, creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control unless the controller pays one. For each of those creatures so boros convoke has eight creatures and two mana open they can only attack you with two creatures that's pretty insane and even you know in some situations better as long as archangel of tice is attacking creatures can't block unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures so if they have zero mana up all your creatures are unblockable as long as this attacks unfortunate right if it was just if this was in the battlefield, this would be completely broken because uh, you could just drop it and finish. But that's still pretty crazy because they can't use mana on their turn without making some of your creatures potentially unblockable. The weird part about the last ability is this obviously slots in Boros Angels and Flying Angels don't really need the second ability that much because they already have Flying. But, I mean, you could put it in other decks. You know I'm throwing this in Orzhov Skeletons. And we're blasting through. Now, maybe maybe Boros with the guy that gives people haste, the three drop that gives people haste, and then you give this haste, and then actually on the first turn, all your things can be unblockable is kind of a crazy strategy. But again, even if you can't use the second one, that first one is really going to stop a lot of these go-wides in their place, and anything that stops Boros Convoke, I'm happy about. Dust Animus, two mana spirit. I love spirits. There's a spirit deck I've already been making. Um, rare, it is not legendary, and it's a 2-3 flyer, which ain't bad, which is why I'm putting this card on this list at all. And then if you control five or more untapped lands, Dust Animus enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters and lifelink, a lifelink 4-5 flyer for two mana. Now, the only way you're going to get it to come in with five untapped lands, because if you play this, you have to tap two lands, is to plot it. Plotting is the new ability where you pay two, and then it exiles this card, and then you can play it on sorcery speed in a future turn for free. So then you just save it until you have five lands, and then play it for free. And then the lands have not been tapped yet, right? But I mean, that sounds good. And again... The reason why I think this card is good, if you need to drop it on turn two as a 2-3 flyer, that ain't bad at all. I mean, those are reasonable stats. Um, especially, we do have a Spirit Lord, guys. There is a guy that makes Spirits plus one plus one. So, I think there's a lot of cool things to do with this. And, my God. If we get this thing down with its lifelink counters and we're playing a creature matchup, we are just going to outrace them every single time. Let's go. Dude, these spree cards are getting out of control. Final Showdown is a one mana instant mythic. Uh, spree means you pay one just to get it going. It's technically you could pay one and it's a prowess trigger. But then to do anything, you have to pay these extra costs. You can pay any of them or all of them. If you pay one more, all the creatures lose all abilities. Pretty cool. So I mean like Sheldred won't ping you for two. The 3-3 three, three Death Touch first strike guy will lose that and you can kill it. A lot of cool things. Uh the bat will no longer have flying. So you can just chunk, you can just block it with a person on the ground, unless I'm under misunderstanding this. I mean, my god, that's a two mana crazy ability. And you can pay one more. 
or just one in, instead and choose a creature you control it gains indestructible so also it's a save so it's kind of a removal plus on the first one depending on how you use it then it's a save on the other one and if you pay five more so that's six total you'd have to pay eight for everything you know uh you destroy all creatures which is super relevant especially in a boros convoke meta and all these different metas where people can get out of control right because they might be board wiping you even if you're a creature deck and then have some tokens some sunfall tokens and then this you know you can board wipe them back and you can have this in your deck not planning on using the board wipe just to kind of blow them out with the first two chapters and then the last chapter could just be like a as needed last chapter also notable you can give your creature indestructible and then destroy all creatures except the indestructible creature for just one more mana so i think very cool i think there will be some very nice uses for this my god wizards is doing some cool cards i'm also super excited because of a lot of these cards target boros convoke I showed you the angel there's a bunch more cool ones but this is another one that can be really good in a lot of decks including boros convoke i mean boros convoke do have that one flash that makes two creatures but i mean just for two mana we get high noon and it rare enchantment each player can't cast more than one spell each turn also for the upside five mana sacrifice high noon it deals five damage to any target so you can just do that to their face for five pretty sick so I think the play here, I mean, you could play a mid-range pile and just be doing one spell. I think the play is to put it in things with flash, right? So honestly, maybe even the eidetic memory deck, because we play the fairy with flash. I play a lot of flash in my blue-white one. I have a pretty good blue-white eidetic memory deck. Um, and then you just do one spell on your turn, one spell on theirs, one spell on your turn, and you're playing double the spells they can. Plus, you have this crazy upside. I guess you need some red. You need to splash some red in there. I mean, you don't even need to, right? But it's probably worth having a few. Yeah, very cool deck. Very cool deck. I mean, yeah, a lot of decks really rely on playing multi-spells. Also, mono red. If they can't play, like, multiple monstrous rages and things and a creature into a monstrous rage, I mean, God, this must be terrible for them. Pretty cool. I'm definitely playing with this card. Yo, guys, I'm going to blow people out with this card. We got Omenport Vigilante, an uncommon for our budget deck lovers. We're going to make a sick budget deck here. Two mana, creature, human mercenary. Relevant type there because it's a outlaw. And some things get benefits from outlaws. Uh, this card has double strike as long as you committed a crime this turn. I mean... Committing crime is a new thing where you target opponents, anything, target them, target their creature, target their graveyard. I think targeting their graveyard is the easiest. A lot of people like, oh, I'm going to remove their stuff. That's too hard. I mean, you might do a removal deck. It's too hard. Don't do it. You should just mill them and then exile their graveyard. That's the best way to do it. We already have Graveyard Trespasser and the two mana Ashnon's Harvester. One of my favorite cards. Everyone's forgetting about it. Two mana Ashnon's Harvester commits a crime every time, including when you unearth it. Um, yeah, and then we can just attack in with things, and this will just have double strike. Which is four damage, plus you can buff it. Very cool card. I'm super excited for it. My god. Rustler Rampage, another spree card that's just broken. One mana, instant, uncommon, budget, boo. Um... Three, so you, I described what that is. You pay one mana, and then you can pay more to do these things. So just for two total, untap all creatures target player controls. So we can tap all our untap all our creatures. So after they attack and we have no blockers, we can untap and blow them out. Are you joking? I'm serious. Are you joking? That's insane. Not to mention, White already has a lot of cool things like Adeline that keep getting value, or there's a lot of Boros things. I mean, my God, this could go in trash people, Poros Convoke deck, maybe. Uh, and then target creature gains double strike for two. So all, for three mana, untap all creatures and target creature gains double strike. You're going to blow them out on blocks. But also, a two mana instant double strike is already a pretty good card. They have them in red. They didn't have them in white, which is interesting. And white has a lot of flyers, so it's super relevant. And uh, the fact, the problem with that is sometimes it's just really not that relevant. But when 
is untap all creatures and target creature gains double strike. When is when is when is that not going to be relevant? You can play one or both. It's very cheap. Banger, guys. This is a banger. We got Caustic Bronco, two mana, Snake Horse Mount. Mount's an interesting type. And uh, Mount is pretty much like a vehicle, although it's already a creature. And then you can tap, like crewing, the saddle cost. Uh, so saddle three means tap a creature or creatures with three power or more. And then you get a special ability. So this two mana two two that's not legendary. Whenever it attacks, reveal the top card of your library, put it into your hand. That's already insane, guys. Insane. Especially with all the combat tricks we got going on in this game. And then you lose life equal to that card mana value if it isn't saddled. If it is saddled, each opponent loses that much life. So you can gain cards. You can put a bunch of adventure cards, like the seven mana thing, Virtue. The black one that for two mana gives something minus three, minus three, and you gain life. And for seven mana, you get things back from your graveyard. And the primary mana cost is seven. So you could draw this off one attack and deal seven damage. Um, That's broken. And we can make an adventure deck around this, right? To kind of exploit things like that. Same thing with like the prototype creatures, right? That, that costs a lot, but you can play it for cheaper. I'm pumped. I may have already talked about this one last time, but I'm gonna, it's so good guys. Two mana, two, two vampire common for you budget lovers. Lifelink, and when it enters the battlefield, target player mills two cards. So self mill and a self mill deck, but committing crimes, this will commit a crime because we can target opponent. Banger, that is pretty crazy. In ancillary crime commission makes me happy and I'm already going to make a very cool self mill mono black deck. So this is going straight in. My God, talking about self mill decks, hollow marauder, seven mana uncommon guys. Are we going to have a tier one uncommon mono black or budget mono black? I did make a no rares mono black. We had to go crazy. We did 16 lands. We were using the case of Gorgon's kiss. I mean, it was pretty good, but look, it wasn't top tier and we had to be out of control. But I think we're getting to a place where we could really get a good budget mono black deck. At the very least, we're going to get a good mono black deck. And current mono black's been struggling with Boros Convoke. But they have a lot of things that are helpful. The lifelink will be helpful. And the self mill things will be very helpful. This is, uh, I mean, seven mana. But the spell is one less to cast for each creature in your graveyard. Also, it rogue is a mercenary, right? So, which is good. And so one less for each creature in our graveyard. If we just start self-milling ourselves for all those creatures like souls and stuff, you know, very easily. Well, five creatures, this will be a one mana four two. It has flying. I mean, a three mana four two with flying with this ability is fine. A two mana four two is broken. A one mana is like, what are we doing here? And I think we can do it pretty easily. And then when it enters, uh, the opponent discards a card. And if they discard something with mana value, uh, four or three or less, then we draw a card. So this can be a 4-2 flyer. They discard a card and we draw a card unless they discard something big. Insane, guys. Uncommon? What are we doing here? I'm super pumped, guys. Mono Black is where my heart is, and this makes me happy. All right, we got Lively Dirge. Two mana sorcery. Uh, uncommon. Look at all these budget bangers in black, baby. It's one of these spree cards, uh, so we have to pay these additional costs. One, search your library for a card, put it in your graveyard, then shuffle. Does that count as a descend trigger? I think so, right? Pretty cool. I play skeletons with descend triggers. There's also skeletons that come back from the graveyard whenever you commit a crime. There's also unearthed creatures that commit crimes, Ashnod. So the, that alone could do something. That could be a descend trigger, and it could be a card that automatically comes back from the graveyard if we pick the right one. And then two mana, more, so five mana total to do all, and, and you know, four mana just to do the last one. Return up to two creature cards with total mana value four less from the graveyard to the battlefield. So pretty cool. I mean, you can get some very cool things there, especially in a self-mill deck 
because the two mana soul and the other guys are huge. They're two mana like 10 tens. Um, maybe Insidious Roots too. Maybe Insidious Roots too. There's some very cool things to do here. Also, there's the two white. So for two white, there's a 4-4 Flying Angel that already exists. Um, but you need to like tap three creatures to play it. But when you reanimate it with things like this, it you don't have to tap the creatures. So you could technically get two 4-4 four, four angels if you get them in your graveyard. And if you pay five, you could find one from your library and put it in there. I've exploited it before with uh, Extraction Specialist and things like that. But, I mean, it's pretty nice. I, I, I'm i going to try this baby out. I think we're going to make it work. All right. Rat decks have not been there. Is this going to put it over? Maybe. We got a one mana Nizumi Link Breaker. Common. Rat Whirlup. Man, why are all the black cards like commons and uncommons? Pretty cool. Uh, or the good ones. A lot of the good ones. When it dies, make a 1-1 one, one red mercenary creature token. There's a bunch of these with tap it. Target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. What's cool is like if you have a bat out, you can tap your mercenary. And then the bat's a 2-1 flying lifelink. So it'll get through and lifelink. So that actually is a relevant ability. The cool thing is a 1-1 one, one that makes another 1-1 one, one that can block. Because usually they can't block. Very cool in a lot of decks, including sack decks. And um, yeah. I mean, we already have those village rights type effects. So this, you know, even descend triggers because we can get this out of here, but it still has something relevant. I think this will have its place for sure. Guys, I'm going out on a limb here. I think this card's good. I really do. We'll see if it's too slow in the current meta with Boros Convoke, but three mana, uncommon warlock, three two death touch. So not great stats. But whenever you commit a crime, target creature you control against your choice of menace or lifelink. That's important because the turn it enters, it can have this effect. And again, there's a bunch of creatures that will just automatically commit crimes when they attack. Like I've mentioned, Ashnods and... Um, I mean, there's a few. But the ones that come to mind are Ashnods, Harvester, and Graveyard Trespasser. I keep forgetting its name. So if you can attack with that and for lethal, get it met, give it menace... But realistically, just for the race, you give it lifelink. And then you've got, you know, a 3-3 lifelink on the turn this enters. So it pretty much should read, give another creature lifelink. I think would be pretty good on a 3-mana, three 3-2 three death touch body. And it can keep doing it. I think it's very close. I'm not saying this is top meta, but it might be. We're going to give it a try. I know, guys, I'm reading all these bad cards pretending they're good, but I just can't stop myself. I mean, this looks nice, too. Uncommon. There's already a ton of zombies until they rotate. So this is only going to probably be good until the rotation. I think zombies, a lot of them are rotating out. But four mana zombie rogue uncommon. Ignore the four mana. I mean, it'll be relevant, but late game. But you can plot it for three. So pay it for three and then play it for free at later turns at sorcery speed. And it's a four three zombie rogue mercenary. And when it enters, if a creature died this turn, create a 2-2 blue and black zombie creature token that can block. It's not one of those decayed zombies or anything, right? That's a lot for three mana. And you can pick when this comes in. And all you have to do is kill a creature or have them kill one of yours, which they're going to have to do. Um, right? Also, we can play this in like a fling deck. Force it. I love Cal Cell Sword or anything. You know, I, I sacrifice my own creatures all the time to do things. There's also things like... Yeah. I mean, I think this is going to be very, very cool. And again, zombies already have a place. I mean, there's the one mana, 1-1. One, one. When a zombie enters, it gets plus one, plus one, right? That's kind of the king zombie. And, and we're just missing a few zombies. This could kind of fit in there, and it's going to double ping it. So, look, we're giving it a try for sure. Guys, I'm sorry. I have to keep doing it. Another uncommon, but I'm telling you this one's busted. Uh, this one's busted. I'm putting it in my deck day one, and we're going to break souls. It's so good. Two mana, Servant of Stinger, Creature Warlock, Human Warlock, Uncommon, 1-3 Death Touch. Not great, but honestly reasonable. I mean, hard to get through. And when it deals combat damage to a player, if you've committed a crime this turn, you may sacrifice it. If you do, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Again, I think it's easier to commit crimes in mono black because we have a lot of cool things. 
we can target their graveyard and there's things that on enter or when they attack automatically commit crimes so we don't have to like use removal spells although we can uh and if we do that if we attack in once it'll be on our following turn because this doesn't have haste we have all our mana up they don't want to block a death touch usually right and if they do whatever uh we, we trade but if they don't block and we sacrifice this that is a descent trigger puts one more creature in your graveyard for self mill it's a descent trigger for corpses our skeletons which we're going to make work and then we find anything e.g another corpses it's going in my skeleton deck day one guys i know it's not a skeleton but this is a nice piece this is an interesting one guys tiny bones joins up one mana legendary enchantment rare when this card enters the battlefield any number of target players each discard a card so it's like right we have the enchantment that does that but pings them for two life too Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, any number of target players each mills a card and loses one life. So that's pretty cool. There are a lot of cheap, uh, the new one mana skeleton that death touches legendary, but there are some cheap legendary spells. Um, we could play Orzhov, right? And there's there's the other white mana Mike guy. And just ping them down. And the interesting part, I'm not in love with this card, but the interesting part is this is a commit a crime trigger, right? because target player mills a card so we just have them mill it pretty cool and if we need our if we need to mill ourselves it's also pretty relevant right in an insidious roots deck or if we need to send trigger it's an interesting one it's cheap it does things cheap crime so if crime's good which some of them look nice that i've showed this could be relevant let's go baby all right, we got Calamity, Galloping Inferno, six mana, Horse Mount, rare, and it's legendary. Four, six haste. You can saddle for one, which means it's like a crew cost for one, but it's already a creature. And if you saddle or tap a creature with one power or more, then you get this ability. When it attacks while saddled, choose a non-legendary creature that saddled it this turn and create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Sacrifice the token at the beginning of your next end step. Repeat the process once. So we get two tokens. It does mean you can't do legendary, right? Because it says non-legendary. So then, there's, I mean, there's just cool combos, right? So it is pretty interesting. Red can already kind of ramp with treasure tokens. We could add green to ramp more. I This isn't really my cup of tea, but I do think I'm going to lose to this card. <laughs> <laughs> I do think out of nowhere on turn like four after they ramp, someone's going to play this and attack it and have all these, you know, because and ETBs or attack triggers are going to go off. So, I mean, yeah, I, I showed a, you know, the Dino Discover deck. Discover works really nice with this because we bring in things. And, uh, you know, it has to be non-legendary, but we can bring in things that Discover... So then that stays on the battlefield even after it attacks. So relevant card. I think it's going to do some stuff. I'm not positive it's top tier, but it very well could be. They're printing Boros Convoke Killers and one-sided board wipes. I'm happy. So two mana, caught in the crossfire, uncommon, budget banger, instant. It's one of these sprees, so you have to pay these extra costs to do anything. For one mana, it deals two damage to each outlaw creature. And for another mana, or instead... It deals two damage to each non-outlaw creature. So you can just wipe the board and kill everything for four. Or you can do one-sided if you're playing an outlaw deck or a non-outlaw deck um, by just paying three. And Boros Convoke, I mean, I think they aren't outlaws. Um, there's already the three mana vampire one, but Boros Convoke has some vampires. So this is just a better version. And again, if you're playing outlaws, you can play this. And it's one-sided or you could just play entirely not outlaws and put this in and then blow out all the outlaw decks that are going to be on the ladder sick card sick card all right we got demonic ruckus two mana uncommon enchantment aura enchant creature enchant creature gets plus one plus one and has medicine trample relevant i wish it was plus two plus one obviously and when it's put into a graveyard draw a card so it's like uh audacity right the green one now unfortunately plus one plus one doesn't really buff it that much for picnic ruiner or for scamp in my turn three kill decks but trample super relevant and menace for both of those because you just want to get damage through also in a prowess deck this is super relevant 
and note that plot for one, so you pay the one, and then on a later turn, you can play it for free at sorcery speed. Uh, you can do that, and you can get some sick prowess triggers. So I think this goes in an all prowess deck in mono red, and we have some prowess boys. So I think we're going to make this work. Guys, I know I'm crazy putting this on my uh, bangers list, but I think we might have something here. Three mana, Porosification, Uncommon Enchantment. I know, I know I'm crazy, guys. I'm going to make this work. Just you wait, just you wait. At the beginning of your combat, including the first turn, choose one. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn, or target creature you control gains Menace and Haste. So this means every new creature you come in has Menace and Haste. And on the first turn, you just give something plus two, plus zero, so it's absolutely not dead. And if you wanted to, you could just give something Menace on the first turn, right? If you don't need the Haste. I mean, this is a value engine, guys. We're going to give this a try. You might need to play some board wipes alongside this to kind of like free it up. I mean, you can also put this on creature lands, the plus two plus so. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna play around with this, guys. It's going to be a thing. I forgot if I showed this card, but I'm going to show it again. Great Tran Heist is broken. One mana instant rare spree for three more untap all creatures you control. If it's your combat phase, you get an additional combat phase. First of all, four mana on top of your creatures can blow up people on blocks, but two combat phases is an extra turn. We can combine it with other extra turn spells, which I'm going to do. And also for two mana creatures, you can roll it plus one, plus one first strike. You can do that after opponent picks blocks, blow them out. And for one mana, choose target opponent whenever a creature you control deals damage to that player, create a tapped treasure token. Infinite treasure tokens, they are tapped. But then our Drake is going to pop off next turn and be like a 7-1 because our Drake grows whenever a we sacrifice a artifact, including a treasure. So, yeah, this is going to be a thing. Guys, Hellspur Posse Boss, I'm making an Outlaw deck. Four mana, Lizard Rogue, not legendary, rare. It's a 2-4, and when it enters, create two one one Mercenary Creature Tokens. And uh, all other outlaws have haste, including these two little one ones that can tap and give something plus one plus zero. Yes, that's so many creatures. And then everything has haste. This people that say this is not good because this is broken. We're gonna bust this card wide open, guys. We have a red counter spell. What is the world coming to? Two mana, instant, uncommon. It's a spree. So for one more, so for three total, copy target instant spell, sorcery spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. You may choose new targets, and then for one more, or instead, change the target uh, of target spell or ability with a single target. So the second one's kind of more interesting. In what you'll normally do for three, we can make Sheldred hit their opponent. If it's going to deal you two damage, it'll deal opponent two damage. I mean, the world fire of rage, they aim it at you to deal X damage, and we aim it back at them. And if we pay four, we can actually do it twice. Is that what's up here? My God, guys. So we can make Sheldred deal. So if Sheldred's going to ping you for four damage because you draw a card, you can make Sheldred instead ping them for four damage. And you get what is happening. That's not even that good of a case. That's just a funny case. There's way better ones like a. Uh, an activated ability is going to make a cool token. We can get the token? Is that how this works, guys? My god, what are we doing? In mono red, very, very cool. What a sick card. Beast Spawn Outcaster, 3 mana, Human Druid, Uncommon, 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card. And we can actually just plot it on turn 2, and then... We can play it at any later turn, including turn three for free to get that sweet, sweet card action. So we actually save a mana. We do lose a turn, but you draw a card. Sounds like a good deal to me. Dude, what is happening? Gold Rush, two mana, instant, uncommon. We're breaking this. Create a treasure token, instant, until end of turn, up to one target creature gets plus two, plus two for each treasure you control. So, first of all, Create a treasure, plus two, plus two, and instant speed is pretty good. And you're telling me if we have like three or four treasures, which we can do with a bunch of cards, it's like plus 10, plus 10 in a treasure. I guess you would need four other treasures for that to happen. 
But uh, yeah, th this is going to get busted and we're going to do it. We might have covered this one last time, but I got to bring it up again. I mean, it's going to change mono green. We have a haste Hydra mythic and uh, it's an X spell with vigilance, trample and haste. And it gets X plus one plus one counter. So it's like Shivan Devastator. But instead of flying, it has vigilance and trample. And when it dies, create a number of tap treasure tokens equal to its power. Pretty sick. Also goes with the last card. We get a ton of treasure tokens, and then we can buff something huge. Not to mention we can then use the treasure. Uh, this is going to be great. It's kind of a better version of the one I showed earlier, but it's still pretty. It's still that other one I still think is cool. I mean, we can play both. Three mana. Creature, human, druid, rare, not legendary. Outcaster, trailblazer. When it enters the battlefield, add one mana of any color. So we can double spell pretty easily. Whenever another creature with power four greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. First of all, you can just play another one of these, right? Um, so this isn't just when it enters, this is multiple times. And a four two is pretty interesting stats. You can also plot it for three, although I don't know why you would. Maybe just get the extra mana to ramp. I mean, I guess, right? We get So we plot it for three, then the next turn we ramp into a five mana spell. And we draw the card right away. So yeah, there's some cool play patterns. Very cool. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be good, but we're going to give it a try. Five mana, railway, brawler, mythic, creature, rhino, warrior. I love that these aren't legendaries. So you can play multiples, right? Reach, trample. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put X plus one plus one counters on it where X is its power. Pretty cool. I mean, we can just have big power things. This isn't, I mean, we can just have a five one or a four one or a three one, right? There's a bunch of two mana three ones, and all of a sudden it's a six three. Sounds good to me, especially if it has um, haste. Uh, the coolest part is you can plot it for four, so you can get it down a turn earlier. Five's a little too expensive. So that I mean, yeah, uh, sounds sounds about good enough to do something here. Very close, very close. We're gonna give it a try. We got Raucous Entertainer. I think this is going to make a splash. Two mana, Plant Bard. It is a plant for you Insidious Roots fans. It will grow itself with Insidious. Remember that. Uncommon. 2-2. Uh, two, two. And for one, and tap it, put a plus one plus one on each creature you control that end of the battlefield this turn. So we can double grow our plants with Insidious Roots. I'm putting it right in Insidious Roots. Also, it's just nice in a token deck to the extent those become feasible and temporary lockdown goes away. Insidious Roots. We're doing this. We're making this happen. It's going to be sick. Do we have a win con to a self mill strategy? Maybe. Rise of the Varmints is four mana, but I'm going to skip to the good part. It's only three mana to plot. So then we can play it for three mana and play it at future turns, which is very relevant here. And it is uncommon sorcery. Create X21 green varmint creature tokens where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So I wonder if you do need to play that the red spell that gives everything haste. I mean, you can just have Imidanes on board, right? Because you plot it, and then later, when you have a lot of creatures in your graveyard, you play this for free, you make five two ones, you play Imidanes, GG! Um, yeah, we're doing that. We're doing that early in the season, baby. Oh my god, guys, if you know my channel, I love Eidetic Memory, Prophet's Eidetic Memory, which draws a card, and then you get plus one plus one counters if you draw more cards in the turn. Every single turn, and this goes straight in it. My god, Duelist of the Mind, two mana, human advisor, rare, not legendary, awesome. Flying and Vigilance, and its power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, this ability only triggers once each turn. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. First of all, we can get this to a 2-3 Flying Vigilance fairly easily. And obviously it can be way more in like a mono blue card draw eidetic memory deck. But even if it's like a 1-3, 2-3, even if all it does is sit on the board and block... And when we commit a crime, we filter. That is reasonable in an eidetic memory deck. I also have a disturbed deck with eidetic memory and like white spirits you can play back from the graveyard. We're making this work, baby. I'm super excited. 
Oh my god, we got a budget banger, guys. Two mana, uncommon, emergent, haunting, enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, an emergent haunting isn't a creature. It becomes a 3-3 spirit creature with flying in addition to its other types. So that's forever, right? Is that how this works? And, I mean, you can just have flash creatures. You can do the um, plot. There's a bunch of ways not to cast spells. I mean, two mana, three, three. That's pretty cool. And three mana surveil, so it's like a mill. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm playing this in a budget mono blue deck. I think this is very cool. All right, we got Flibliff. Lost on the range. I'm sure I said that wrong. Three mana with two blue. It's a rare. It is legendary. And it's a 1-1 one, one with ward two. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. The top card of your library has plot, which means we can, um, if you pay the cost, then it goes into exile and you can play for free at a later turn at sorcery speed. The plot cost is equal to its mana cost. And you may plot non-layer cards from the top of your library. Very cool. So this is kind of an infinite thing. So if you have a low mana curve deck with a lot of one drops. Does that make this awesome? I'm definitely going to try. I mean, blue, white, go wide with the go wide case is already very close to a thing. This could really put it over the top. Yeah, the ward is nice, too, because they can't just blow you out. I think there's a deck here, baby. Zombies are real, baby. We got a three mana Jeroff the Flesh Rite common. It is legendary. Uh, it is a human warlock. It's not a zombie itself, but still, whenever you cast a spell during your turn, other than your first spell that turn, create a 2 2 blue and black zombie rogue creature token. It can block, it's not decayed. Whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on it for each other zombie that entered the battlefield under your control this turn. So. If we're playing it in a zombies deck, we can just get a bunch of extra counters, right? And there's also a lot of ways to get decayed zombies, right? There's the two mana guy. There's also an enchantment. When something dies, you make it a decayed zombie. So I think we can exploit decayed zombies that are easy to get in play to uh, really pop off. Also, the zombie lord, the three mana headless rider type guy, where when a zombie dies, you make a zombie token. Uh, yeah, so if they block a bunch of your things when that's in play and three zombies come back, then we're just getting big boys. Uh, yeah, pretty good mana cost, I think. I mean, we can get a 2-2 on the first turn by playing like this in a bounce spell for one or something. Yes. Let's go. So zombies, by the way, last th uh, some of these cards are going to rotate, right? But it'll be very good for the next few months, so we have to get it while we can. My God, what is happening? They're just printing bangers. Geyser Drake, three mana, creature Drake, flying. Common? As long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost one less to cast. Guys, I'm going out on a limb and saying this is broken. You know your counter spells now that are usually two cost one to counter anything, or three mana counter spells cost two. All our flash creatures can go in and do crazy things. I mean, memory deluge costs three. What have they done and why have they made this a common? This is a crazy card, guys. Something's something's happening here. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to break it. This is going to be one of the first ones we do. All right, we got another common that's a budget banger. One mana sorcery. It's a jailbreak scheme. And it's a common spree, so we have to pay these additional costs to do anything. So for three more, four total, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It can't be blocked this turn. Obviously expensive for that effect, but it's modal. So just for three mana, two more, target artifact or creature's owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library, which is just a removal spell. It's just a removal spell. They have to literally draw it again and play it again if they put it on the top. So we have a three mana kill any creature with upside because you can play the other side. And for six mana, you can play both. Uh, we're doing this. We are doing this.
My god, all these spree cards are so busted and they're budget bangers. One mana metamorphic morphic blast. Instant, instant, uncommon. So just for two, until end of turn, target creature becomes a white rabbit with base power and toughness zero one. So it can be a removal spell or blow someone out. If you have a trample creature, even after blocks, you can get all that damage through. I mean, also it has zero one. So you do it on like the first strike death touch guy and it doesn't even do any damage. Also a fog of war effect. There's so many good things with that. Um, and then for th for four total, target player draws two cards. And five, you do both. Um, yeah. A fog of war pseudo removal spell attached to card draw is great. We're just going through all the spree cards, I guess. Another budget banger. Phantom interference. One mana instant common. So for four, we create a 2-2 two -two white spirit creature token with flying. Not great. But for just two, we counter target spell unless its controller pays two. That's kind of the cost. You know, make disappear, you can get more, you can um, make them pay more by sacrificing creatures. So it's not as good as make disappear on that side. But first of all, you can play both because this has a creature upside. But I think the modality is very cool. Just for five, you can do both, which is interesting in certain types of decks. It is an instant, guys. Um... I think it's just very, very nice. And also, I am making spirit decks. I have been making spirit decks. So, it's going right in there, baby. Is this another budget banger? We'll see. We'll see if we can make this work. But a two mana, one, two human wizard common. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and it cannot be blocked this turn. So, it's a two, three unblockable as long as we cast two spells. And it'll be a 3-4 if we cast two spells the next turn unblockable, right? So I guess you don't really need to do the two spells on the first turn. So I've been playing a lot of Eidetic Memory, like I said, and you always cast two spells. So I think there is a chance we can get this popping off. We're definitely going to try. All right, guys, I know I'm going off the deep end, but I think this might be a thing. Three mana, creature, human, soldier, shackle, slinger, uncommon, 3-2. This is going to be one of those um, limited cards that make work, I think. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, choose target creature and opponent controls. If it's tapped, put a stun counter on it, which means it won't untap next turn. Otherwise, tap it. So the point being, a lot of times they'll attack and they'll have tapped creatures and we can just stun counter people. You could technically do it on their turn as well, but that'd be harder. How good is stun countering and tapping creatures kind of every turn in a deck you just saw another benefit to play casting two cards where we cast two spells a turn i mean it feels about right very close it's also human and a soldier guys is humans i mean is soldiers back is so uh, guys we might have to try this i mean soldiers is casting two spells a lot too they get the uh convoke knight so they don't run out of gas. I mean, my God, we're definitely going to give this baby a try and we'll see. Guys, I, I think that there's some decks that will like this over Shelly in Demir decks. I really do. I think this is very cool. Stoic Sphinx, four mana, non-legendary, play multiples, rare. It has flash and it's a 5-3 flyer. But Stoic, it has hexproof as long as you haven't cast a spell this turn. Now, it does still get hit by wipes and things, but... I mean, the play pattern is you wait till the end of their turn. We already saw another thing that makes spells that we cast on opponents turn one cheaper, the Drake. So this would be th on turn three, a 5-3 flyer at flash. And then you hopefully they've spent most of their mana. You flash into the end of their turn. Then we untap, and then we haven't cast anything this turn. If you cast it on your turn, you've cast a spell, so it doesn't have Hexproof that first turn. But if you do it that other way, now we have a 5-3 flyer they can't remove except, like, wipes and sacrifice effects. And, I mean, how many turns does it take to kill someone with this? And I keep mentioning Eidetic Memory, but I have... My blue version had all flash spells. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're doing this. Guys... Wizards is losing their mind. Modality is very good. I mean, like, there's these Rankle. If you remember Rankle, I think you'd hit them, and then you'd have to hurt yourself and your opponent. But you got to pick. Not Rankle's Prank, like an actual Rankle. 
And the point is, even though you're hurting yourself, the modality is just so nice because you get to choose. Here, it's all upside at instant speed. I mean, we get a three mana counter spell here. Fine. Fine. That is fine. Um, because it's also attached to a three mana, draw two cards and discard a card. And it's also attached to a four mana, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control. So we can copy the thing we just showed. The four mana flash five three thing at instant speed. To have two five threes and then we can do it at the end of the opponent's turn. So they don't even have time to react and then we they both have hexproof again because then it's our turn. And you can just pay a ton of mana and do all these things. Yes. Yes, sir. Guys, the power level's real. This card is crazy. I mean, I love the power level is getting kind of raised just because Boros Convoke's going to get pushed out. Not necessarily by this card, but by the power level in general. There is some power creep, but it seems to be done in a fun way in this set, so I'm super pumped. But Assimilation Aegis, 3 mana, artifact equipment, not legendary, it is mythic. When it enters, exile up to one target creature until this leaves the battlefield. But when you, uh, you can equip this for two onto your own creature. So it's already a three mana remove a creature. Equip it for two onto one of your creatures. And when it becomes attached to a creature for as long as it remains attached to it, that creature becomes a copy of the creature card you exiled. So you can you can kill their Atroxa and then put this on your 1-1. One -one, and now your 1-1 one -one is an Atroxa. And then they kill your 1-1 one -one, and you put this on another 1-1 one -one, and your other 1-1 one is an Atroxa. Crazy. All right, we got Doc Orlock, Grizzle, Genius, two mana, green and a blue, legendary creature, Bear Druid, uncommon. Spells you cast from your graveyard or from exile cost two less to cast. Plotting cards from your hands cost two less to cast. Insane. First of all, there's the blue thing that you can plot everything, even if it does not plot. I assume it works with this. Uh, there's Disturb, there's Unearth. I love Unearth. I mean, this might even go in Insidious Roots, right? You splash some blue, which people are already doing, and then you can get all your things back from your graveyard by paying their, like, unearth or their, you know, different costs to get them out of your graveyard, the creatures. Uh, like the fairy that costs three, and you exile from your graveyard, you draw a card that only costs one. Yes. Yes, please. Talking about Insidious Roots, this might go right in there, right? Three mana, legendary human warlock, uncommon, honest rut scene. It's a 3-2. And when it enters, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Already triggers Insidious Roots. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. The reason I like this, um, there is the three mana Planeswalker that everyone plays with Insidious Roots that I think is terrible. Because it only helps you when you have Insidious Roots and otherwise it's bad. This card is good even if you don't have Insidious Roots in play. And can really pop off with the creature spells you cast cost one, le uh, one less to cast. I mean, you can just play a turn four bat thing, right? The the five mana. So there, there's some really cool things you can do with this. I mean, I do wonder if you put that in your Insidious Roots deck, but you could relook at Graveyard Trespasser in your Insidious Roots deck if it's two mana after you play one of these. So very cool card, and we're definitely going to try it out. Guys, we have a token drainer. Very sick. Campbell, Profiteering Mayor, three mana. Human Advisor, Rare, Legendary, a 2-4, and whenever a to uh, one or more tokens enters the battlefield under opponent's control, we make a tapped token that's a copy. It only triggers once each turn, but very sick. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So some sustain and damage. We're going to have to look back at some token decks. I know that Temporary Lockdown messes them up. At least this does get around Temporary Lockdown. And we're going to... We're, I mean, I'm going to make this work. Don't you worry. We got Kellen the Kid. Three mana. The mana is weird. It's legendary, so I probably won't play it that much. But 3-3 three, three Flying Lifelink, and you get free stuff. So we might, we might have to break our two-color rule and give it a try. Uh, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, including plotted, including um, adventures, you may cast a permanent spell with equal or less mana value from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Oko the Ringleader. We're going to give this a try. I'm not sure if it's going to actually live up to being good. 
it is a four mana planeswalker just with three loyalty um and the cool thing though is at the beginning of your combat this becomes a copy of target creature we control until end of turn and it has hex proof so that is pretty cool unfortunately you you know you can't copy legendary things but there are a lot of cool blue and green things that are big boy i mean green's got some big boys right and plus one, draw two cards if you've committed a crime, which is targeting anything related to your opponent, their graveyard, a creature, or them. Uh, then we only discard one card. Otherwise, two cards, so it's a filter. But it is card advantage if we committed a crime. And then minus one, create a 3-3 three, three elk. Throwback there. And minus five, which isn't too hard to get to. For each other non-land permanent you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. So a pretty sick ultimate. So look, we're definitely giving this a try. I think it's got a great power level. Whether it's good now, maybe post-rotation, we'll have to take give a second look. All right, we got Rakdos joins up. Probably the best new reanimator spell. Pretty cool. Five mana, legendary enchantment rare. When it enters, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with two additional plus one plus one counters. And then whenever a legendary creature dies, this deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. So... I mean, we can fling and do double damage, right? Because one from Kalis Sword, the fling card. And it'll also deal damage equal to the creature's power from this. So I usually don't like really expensive reanimator spells, but I mean, if it combos with Kalis Sword, you know we're giving it a try. I kind of love this card. Uh, Seraphic Seed, Steed, two mana. I do love these colors too i love green white the green white go wide land is my favorite creature land uh creature unicorn mount it's rare two two first strike lifelink i mean that's good already right uh but it's got this saddle ability where it's like crew you crew for four and then you get the special thing whenever seraphic seed attacks while saddled create a 3-3 three, three white angel creature token with flying pretty crazy on an already good body and i mean there's plenty of interesting creatures so one thing to do is extraction specialist you bring back creatures and they can still tap for saddle and crew but the creature can't actually attack until extraction specialist is dead um additionally i mean it's interesting there is a deck with a dino discover deck with green and white in it which does play big creatures and plays fight rigging so then you'd easily have some ways to saddle and kind of blow off even if you don't hit fight rigging i mean i think there's a lot to do here and i mean look if this was just a two mana first strike lifelink two two I might play it. So, uh, yeah, super excited because this is some crazy upside. Yo, there's these new damage lands. Um, <clears throat> and you, this is just an example of a color combo, but it enters tapped, but it deals one damage to target opponent. I think there's going to be a lot of decks that like these. I mean, extra damage is just crazy. And yeah i mean extra damage is just crazy on your lands and there's plenty of times especially late game where you still want to keep your land drops going but having one less land but doing a damage in exchange i think is a good trade a lot of the time so just so you know there's this big score thing that comes out alongside it. it's 30 cards they're all like mostly mythic and rare they're very good Here's oh, the first one we're looking at. Collector's Cage, two mana, artifact, mythic. These are standard legal. Um, hideaway fight. This is a white fight rigging, guys. A white fight rigging that can come down a turn before. Hideaway five. You find a card. You can play it. You put it under it. You can play it for free. The way to play it for free is pay one and tap this. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Then if you control three or more creatures with different power, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost very cool right also there's a bunch there's tricks here one mercenaries can tap to give something plus one plus oh so we can cheat even if we have like one mercenary if we have two mercenaries and then one other thing that's like a two two we can tap one mercenary to 
or I guess the other thing would have to be a 3-3. Three, three. We could tap one mercenary to grow the other one, so then we have a 1-1, one, 2-1, one, one, and 3-1, right? Also, you like zero threes and zero fours can come down early, so we might want to play some zero power creatures with this so that it's easier to get off very early on. Um, yeah, but I mean, sick. A white fight rigging, guys. What is not to like? Dude, this card is crazy. Greed's Gambit, 4 mana enchantment mythic. When Greed's Gambit enters the battlefield, you draw 3 cards, gain 6 life, and create 3, 2, 1 bat creatures with flying. But at the beginning of your end step, you discard a card, lose 2 life, and sacrifice a creature. So really, the top should say 4 life, 2, 2, 1s, um, and draw 2 cards, which is still great. But when this card leaves the battlefield, you discard three cards, lose six life, and sacrifice three creatures. So you get blown out if they kill us, which there is a lot of enchantment hate now uh, due to Boros Convoke and things like that and temporary lockdown. So it's a little scary, but I mean, if you can protect this with a counter spell, by the way, with blue in the Demir deck, also there's the thing that like cancels activated abilities, the flash uh, creature. And we could cancel at least one of these or the trigger when it leaves if we hold it up, right? So if you can protect this with counter spells and that, I think this is just a crazy card and we're definitely giving it a try. Oh baby, am I pumped for this? Anything that kills Boros Convoke. Five mana spirit, mythic, not legendary, and it's a menace five four. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. It includes your creatures, but who cares? Two mana. And you can discard this, and target creature gets minus two, minus two. So if you don't have the five mana, it can just be a two mana um, channel ability to remove something. Very nice. Also, this is a descend trigger when you do the discard because it goes in the graveyard. So yeah, I mean, this is awesome. This is awesome. There's ways to find creatures. Um... There's the three mana saga, green saga, where you can find a creature. And unfortunately, that deck, the ones I make, loses to Boros Convoke. But now we can find a creature that's a board wipe. Is going to put that over the top. I've got a lot of great ideas with this card. And we're going to pop off. All right, we got Generous Plunderer. My god, what a great card. Two mana human rogue, so it is an outlaw. Two, two, and it's not legendary. Menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a treasure token. When you do, target opponent creates a tap treasure token. And then whenever this attacks, it deals damage to defending player equal to the number of artifacts they control. So we do miss the first turn, right? Because it's, it's upkeep. Um, but they don't get a treasure until our next upkeep. And when it attacks, deals damage to defending player equal to the number of artifacts. There's a combo here with the black guy that gives people blood tokens there's like a flyer that gives people blood tokens when they cast spells we're gonna we're gonna make that pop off but also treasures there's decks where when you sacrifice treasures your creatures grow like drake and things like that i've been trying to make one work with a bunch of different creatures like that and obviously this will put it over the top because if our treasures buff our creatures and their treasures don't then we're just getting more and more ahead as our treasures benefit us multiple ways as this stays in play and a two mana two two menace i mean there are worse things so i'm definitely going to be playing around with this yeah what what is happening this is like the best cards i've seen ever two mana legion extruder artifact mythic when it enters the battlefield two damage to any target to, including to their face so just very sick then for two and tap it sacrifice another artifact like a map token anything treasure token Create a 3-3 three, three colorless golem artifact creature token. It can block, it stays around, and we can do this every turn. Yes. So this survives around, across, past board wipes. And then if we have like map tokens, we can just keep making 3-3s three, every turn. And the map tokens survive the board wipes too. So uh, yeah, very, very cool card. Molten Duplication. Wow, what a cool card. Two mana sorcery, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its types. It gains haste until end of turn, sacrifice at the beginning of your next end step. So 
you need like this could go in like the discover deck where one of our creatures discovers other creatures so it stays in play so we get multiple value um and our etbs death triggers i mean there's so many cool things to do with this and uh, i mean it can just blow people out out of nowhere right i mean imagine we have that six mana discover dinosaur down it's like a seven six or whatever and and discovers five and you play this you discover five and you swing in with another seven six out of nowhere for two mana yes yes please we have another token lord maybe tokens are coming back three mana human artificer mythic sandstorm salvager it's just a one one but when it enters make a three three colorless golem artifact creature token and then two and tap it Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature token you control and they gain trample. So even without anything else, you're making a 4-4 four, four trample golem when you tap this in paid two. But obviously we're going to put this in a thing full of tokens and pop off. I mean, the turn after, if they don't kill, if they kill this, we still have a 3-3 three, three behind. If they don't kill this and we've got some tokens, we're swinging in with some, you know, plus one plus one creature tokens that have trample the very next turn and then i think we're just too far ahead so i mean very very cool est control it should be called boros convoke control two mana white and black my favorite colors i love orzov skeletons destroy all non-land permanents with mana value one or less now we'll kill our skeleton token so we do have to watch out i guess in that deck but i mean goodbye half of boros convokes creatures right and cycling too, so we can get rid of it and draw another card if we have to. So, you know, probably not going to go on my Skeletons deck, but you can probably make some sick Orzhov decks you otherwise couldn't because this will keep Boros Convoke in check way more than the tools we used to have. So this is a crazy card. Lost Jit, uh, one mana, legendary equipment. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage, put a charge counter on this. Remove a charge counter from it and choose one, untap a land, target creature can't block this turn, put a plus one plus one on it, equipped creature. And um, you can obviously put this on a creature that's already in play so it can attack at that turn. And it's only one to equip. So let's just like, guys, let's just put it on our bat, right? Now our bat flies in, hits, now it's a two, two lifelink, or um, the next turn if we wanna remove a tar charge counter, or we can, I mean, or we can just on the very first turn untap a land and kind of get half our mana back we spent on this. I think this is a crazy value machine. And remember, when they kill our bat, we just re-equip it on something else after and keep going. And the charge counters stay on there that we've accrued. So, um, yeah, this will be quite the mid-rangey grindy card. And if you just pair it with some cards that can deal with Boros Convoke, I think this can go the distance. Guys, this is one of my favorite cards just because of what it does to Boros Convoke. I already use Thrall in my white decks um, that kind of does this, but it's on a creature so they can kill it. And I would love something like this in my mono black deck because my mono black deck beats everything but Boros Convoke. So two mana artifact. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Boros Convoke, they're Knight, Imidane, they're things that make artifacts. Um, War Leader's Call none of them trigger so the the way to make this work you probably want other artifact synergies or synergies that help so the interesting thing in mono black is there's the six one big skeleton guy or six two that when it enters makes one ones for the opponent so the fact that this helps us by shutting up boros convoke and like the bad and other things but also in a mono black skeletons deck will help us because our skeleton gets way better because it doesn't give the opponent the one ones might mean we can just play it in best of one main deck and we're definitely giving that a try guys you thought control was out of control well guess what we got a control killer here grand abolisher two mana creature human cleric during your turn your opponent can't cast spells or activate abilities uh of artifacts creatures or enchantments so they can't counter your stuff they can't blow you out they can't do wandering emperor uh yeah this is uh pretty crazy Pretty crazy anti-control. Let's do it. Three mana, Oltec Matterweaver. It is a human artificer. A two, four. Whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one. Create a one, one colorless gnome artifact creature token. Create a copy of target artifact token you control. 
So obviously this goes with that four mana one. I forget what it's called that makes giant artifact tokens based this based on um, the power and toughness are equal to the amount of artifacts you have in play. So hey man, I mean pretty cool. Even without the last one, just making one ones when you cast creatures on a two four, and this is not legendary. That doesn't sound bad in a go wide deck. Yeah. Let's do it, baby. Delny. It says power two or less. So you can do it twice if Delny's in play. We're doing it, baby. Rest in peace. I mean, such a cool card. Uh, enchantment. Exile all graveyards when it enters. And if a card or token will be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. I only raise this because that landfall deck with Nyssa, the three mana elf, where they just keep doing the lands that go in your graveyard and back. This will solo it. Now, maybe that's more of a best of three thing. I don't know if we can put it in best of one. Maybe in an enchantment deck. Is there enough stuff that we can justify this? We'll see. We'll see. But also noteworthy because this will be in the meta. So you'll see it happening whether we play it in our decks or not. All right, guys, if you didn't see the card you like, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Also, check out this video. It has some of the early cards that I reviewed that I may not have duplicated in, uh, in the current video you just watched. I make a unique deck a day, so remember to like and subscribe. We're going to bust this meta open. Boros Convoke is never going to win again. Let's go, baby.